Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu I'm your host Mr. Noor Kabara for Under the Minbar today, our fifth episode uh, Thank you to all those viewers and listeners joining us today on another beautiful Tuesday evening uh, Once again, some uh, reflection on the last episode we had Episode 4 with our brother Tariq Ahmed Episode um, and me personally, I learned a lot. I took away a lot from that episode in particular. Uh, a lot of educational points, a lot of things about uh, mental illness that I didn't know in the past that I came to learn about, you know, in such a short amount of time, which goes to show how uh, beneficial it can be just to, you know, immerse yourself around people that are knowledgeable in particular fields. Um, so again, I will reiterate the fact and something that Tariq said on the day that was quite important was um, get yourself educated about it. There's There's some great websites um i think he was saying beyond blue was was one of them with some basic information there on uh, what to do in regards to people dealing with uh mental health issues and uh look he himself is involved in a great organization edu aid uh, where they do first aid uh, mental health um reach out to them on facebook see how you go today however uh, i have a very dear sheikh to me uh, and the topic we will be covering is uh, marriage and divorce. Uh, so you could all assume that in front of me now I have uh, Mr. Sheikh Bilal Dunun. How are you, Sheikh? Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, very well. for having me on this uh, awesome uh, podcast and awesome program that you have going. Barakallah, Fik. Um, again, thanks for joining us. I know why uh, generally you're a busy man and uh, a lot of people do try to catch you, but uh, you have found a way to make some time for us now so uh look i don't personally know a lot about you uh, and generally what i do with my guests that come here get them to just tell us a bit about yourself how things start for you i mean i know you studied overseas where did you study what made you get into studying maybe and when you came back how how were things and what are you doing these days bismillah alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah um, I commenced my studies at the Islamic uh, University of Medina, um, came back to Australia and completed a, a degree in linguistics, in languages. Um, and then subhanAllah, you know, continue to try and uh, grow and to develop my knowledge. And uh, as uh, Imam Ahmad uh, Ibn Hanbal, he was once asked, you know, he said, uh, you still have the writing uh, you know, instrument, where whatever they used to write in back then. And he said, Ma'al mahbara ila al oh, And I, uh, he said, I have my, you know, my pen until the grave. And I think that should be the way of a Muslim, you know. And as you rightly said, you spoke about knowledge before. And we are a people of Iqra. Mm. And we know that when the when the the first uh, revelation came down to the Prophet Sallallahu those five verses, many of the words in those five verses were iqra and qalam and allama. They're all to do with knowledge. So we continue to grow, inshallah Taala, and inshallah. to learn. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So after the, after your return uh, and your studies back here, you said you got into I mean what you're known for now, doing uh, marriage celebrancy and. Um, Yes. Counseling, I guess, as well, yeah. Well, subhanAllah, um, you know, I've, I find, um, I remember there was a very famous uh, sheikh in our community, mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh Khalil al-Shami, Allah yirhamu, rahmatullah alayhi, he's passed Amen. on now. And he was very well known um, for, you know, marriages. And subhanAllah, um, I used to look at him and think, think how amazing his job is that he goes around from, you know, home to home, venue to venue, um, talking to people about marriage and relationships and how important they are. And, and I thought, wow, what a, um, what a job, like, you know, what a career to, to, be, to be going from place to place to help people um, better their marriages. Um, and I, I really was inspired by him, subhanAllah. And that's where the inspiration sort of began from. Um, and um, and then, you know, when you're in the community and you're doing, um, you, you know, you're doing, you're engaged with the community, mm. the community members will come up to you and ask you questions about their relationship. And and so you start to think, oh, I you know, don't have too much experience. I have a bit of knowledge. And you start to increase your knowledge. 
uh, about relationships, and that's something that I personally undertook myself to to grow in the area of relationships and understanding relationships, uh, not only from a an Islamic perspective, but also from a very practical, pragmatic um, perspective, um, psychological perspective. Really trying to understand uh, gender differences and our needs as human beings mm. and our and how we differ as males and females. And Allah Azza wa Jalla does say in the Quran. وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنْثَى And the male is not like the female. And so we are we are very different. Yeah. And, um, and I think, um, you know, I think when I began this, I started picking up some books on this and this topic. And the more I read, it wasn't just about understanding um, the opposite gender, but it was, it was a lot about understanding myself uh, as a human being first and foremost and how I... Um, how I react to things, how I deal with things, my emotions, the emotions of the people in front of me. And subhanAllah, from there, I really, really enjoyed it. And so, um, you know, I made it a serious effort to pick up almost any study, any book I can get my hands on to really learn about the area of relationships, mm. to better relationships, because it turns out that good marriages keep us happier and healthier. Yeah, yeah, well... They definitely do. I mean, you just got to ask uh, all the happy married men and women out there. They they generally do feel a lot more composed in life, and you feel like I guess aspects like health and worship, and you know, and even just general well being. Whenever their relationship is kind of on a nice track, you can tell someone's in a happy place in general. Absolutely, and if you don't mind me sharing a, of course. a statistic with yeah, you, yeah. there was a, a Harvard study. It was one of the longest. Uh, studies that has been undertaken. It was a 75-year study, and they um, they studied and they tracked the lives of about 700 odd men uh, from their youthful years right through to their old age. Mm. And they saw uh, they they saw the, their lives and and witnessed how some of them uh, became very successful and you know prominent figures in their community, and um, you know they were very happy. And some who were ended up in jail, and some who um, who were involved with drugs or domestic violence and what have you, and Subhanallah, they realized then there was a pattern, and one of the one of the pa- the patterns or one of the contributors um, to those who really excelled in their life was that they were in um, a good marriage, and so this study, one of the one of the um, the take-home messages from this study was that um, the quality of your marriage determines many things. Mm. It determines your uh, physical health. It impacts your physical health. It impacts your mental self. It impacts uh, your wealth, how much money you're going oh, to make. 100%. Um, it, impacts, um, it impacts your resilience to feel better. And there's even statistics to say that something like just 40-odd percent of lost productivity um, in the workplace um, is a result of people, of spouses coming to work, um, having uh, problems from home. So subhanAllah, it's so important to find yourself in a tranquil home. And Allah Azza wa Jal does say, Wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakana, that Allah has made your home a place of sakina, mm. uh, of, of tranquility. And there's an Arabic proverb that says, Alfu aduwin kharish dari wala aduwin wahidin. It's better to have a thousand enemies outside of your home mm. than one then enemy one inside, inside of your home. Yeah. So there's lots of truth to that, you know. Hundred percent. Do you think? Uh, I mean, is is there like one key to a successful marriage? Absolutely not. You know, Absolutely a lot of people not. these days they come up to you know they they come and then we have discussions and we talk about this sort of thing and it's like a lot of people feel like there's just this one magic thing, one magical point that they need to have in order to get a successful marriage. I mean, ha- yeah, they probably say, you know, you haven't got Dean, brother, or she hasn't yeah, got Dean, yeah, sister. Yeah, 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 it's just and like one thing, right? And if you haven't got Dean, look, you know, subhanAllah, I've sat with um, countless couples mm. um, in, you know, day-to-day um, through, you know, through face-to-face counseling, through online counseling. Um, and, you know, I sit with people and I and I know most of, a lot of the times I say to them, subhanAllah, you are both beautiful people, like they're practicing, they're religious, um, but they were just they're just not working mm. um, and they're not connecting and there's um, many reasons for that maybe we can go into that a little bit later yeah, of on course. but um, but um, it's there isn't one key 
to a to a successful marriage. There mm. is a number of keys, and yeah. yes, um, if we're going to start talking about the keys, um, then yes, um, of course, your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal um, is a very important key. Mm. Um, the the pious people of the past um, that they, they were known to say, you know, repair your relationship with the Creator. And he will repair your relationship right, yeah. with the creation. Mm. Um, one of the first questions that I do ask couples whenever I um, I do see them and speak to them about their relationship and challenges um, is how is your relationship with Allah? Mm. Because we have to be, you know, uh, we have to be realistic here that whatever goodness comes our way um, is from Allah and whatever you know, harm, much of the harm that comes towards us is either a test from Allah or it's due to what our own, own hands have earned or have done. Yeah. So I think that's always the, the starting key. It's a very important key yeah. and one that should never ever be undermined. Um, and it could be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is really testing the relationship um, because of the lack of connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm. You know, one thing I read um, in a book about a couple of years ago on this topic, I think it'll, it'll make your job quite hard, you know, every time I think about it, is that <clears throat> one thing I guess we need to do as a community is understand that every single person is created different, which means every single relationship is going to be different. And it's not a case that hey, um, I married a guy that's, let's say, for example, uh, and my dearest apologies to anyone out there that's a carpenter. Let's say uh, I married a guy that's a carpenter and he was, you know, a particular way at home that didn't, you know, uh, sit well with me from a female's perspective, let's say. Um, so her, she'll go tell her friend, don't marry any carpenters, all right? This, this is, I married one and he was like this at home, etc. Watch out. For an actual fact, it's like, hold on. Like that's specific to you, you know, or, you know, whatever, whatever the style or character the other person is, it's like that's specific to you. You can't say, I mean, um, you know, let's be honest here. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I'm going to marry an import. They're just going to come and, and take my visa and, and, and things like that. It's like, happened to your cousin? Yeah, but that's your cousin. You know, how do you know haram that you need that <laughs> your, your sister or whoever it is that's going to marry this person from overseas? You're oppressing them now. Like, how do you know they're going to do the exact same thing? You're basing it on past experience from, you know, someone who, who, who sits in a similar page, I guess. So, my point is, like, I mean, how difficult is it on your end knowing that everyone is so different and the keys might be general, but although we are so different, how do you get to, I guess, understand or put forward to these people that look your case is specific to you don't worry about what's happened or what other things you've probably heard um and, and things like that i mean how do you how do you come across with advice there putting forward to someone that your situation is only specific to yourself potentially well definitely you can't paint everybody with the same brush mm. and um every you've need to we you need to always analyze every case um individually um, um, and uh, once again, uh, you know, you mentioned people coming from overseas or, you know, that they're, they're called yeah, the yeah, yeah, as uh, an example. Yeah. Um, you know, I've seen amazing, uh, um, individuals that come from um, overseas who mm. make the best of spouses. Yeah, yeah. And then there are those who come from overseas with another agenda. Um, you know, so I guess that's where due diligence comes in, mm. you know, and I think, you know, you, you definitely, it's like, you know, uh, you know, if you see, if you see one Lamborghini, is that your favorite car, Lamborghini? No. No, it isn't. What, not, is yeah. it? what is it? What is it? What's your favorite? For me? Yeah. For a good question. Um, <laughs> not really let's a car. Let's say it's a Lamborghini for now. McLaren, maybe. Yeah. McLaren. Okay. Yeah. Well, wow. There you go. That's another level. So let's say, for example, we see a McLaren, okay, or a Lamborghini that's uh, wrapped around a pole, smashed. Yeah. Do we say all Lamborghinis are bad cars? No, of course What do we not. say? Yeah. I guess that's... That's a bad yeah, driver. Yeah, that's a bad driver. Yeah. You know, so again, we cannot really paint um, any mm. ethnicity or any trade mm. or, um, you know, any person that belongs to a certain category mm. that that's it, they're all bad or what have you. It's yeah. absolutely not the case yeah, at yeah. all. So we really need to be very, very careful there. Do you um, find that comes your way a lot though? 
I, I can't say I, I have those type of cases. Okay. Um, alhamdulillah, I do a lot of um, uh, intercultural marriages. So if you have a look at my you know, Facebook page, yeah, Instagram yeah, page, you see a lot of the photos. It's beautiful. And, and one of the reasons why I like to have a lot of those photos is to really show um, is to show that, you know, really our faith is about um, inter, you know, intercultural, um, you know, intercultural marriages and how, you know, especially when we're living in a, a, a multicultural country like Australia, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's not very easy to just marry from your own culture That's as right. we're, we, we are intermingling, you know, uh, whether it's a university or the workplace or the masjid with all sorts of cultures around yeah, us yeah, and we're yeah. bumping into all sorts of people. 100%. So, um, you know, when we look at that, you know, that famous verse in the Quran, Surah Tarun, which, you know, everybody prints on their wedding invitation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know the one, huh? Uh, I don't know. I've not memorized uh -huh. that part. But. Yeah. Well, I mean, ayati here, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he mentions this verse. And from amongst his signs is that he created for you, spouses for you from your own kind, so no. that you may live in tranquility with them. Uh, and he has placed between you, you know, mawadda, deep love and mercy. And subhanAllah, uh, before this verse, before this verse, uh, يعني, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ you know, أَنْ خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ تُرَابِ he reminds us that he created us from Torah, that mm. we all originate from the same source. Nothing, yeah. We all originate from this dust, from yeah. this sand, right? Mm. That's our origin. And then and in the following verse, after that middle verse that everybody prints on their, you know, invitation cards, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَاتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ so here Allah reminds us about how we have different tongues and we have different color skin. Right, so um, we know that, for example, in uh, Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ya uh, nas, He calls out to the people, "In khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, we created you males, females, wa jaalnakum shu'uban wa qabail, we made you into nations and tribes, mm. nita'arafu, so you can get to know one get another. To know one How are we going to get to know one another with all these barriers? That's right. And so, you said something beautiful that reminded me uh, of of a of a statement, and that is. You know, you spoke about you know this, you know this cross-cultural um, differences. You know, mm. we can have differences coming from one culture to another, yeah. but even within us, we have differences. Yeah, we have different. Yeah. You know, so so it's not just a culture from the outside, but even within us, there is an internal uh, uh, sort of an an, an, an internal uh, culture that we, we we differ we differ with when it comes to our expectations when it comes to our personality when it comes to our personality uh, you know all of those things mm. alhamdulillah i'll just remind the uh, to our facebook live viewers uh if you guys do have any questions please feel free to uh drop a comment there in the box and uh i will inshallah give it to the sheikh uh, when we have some time um moving along i want to uh share some polls that i've done throughout the week uh, on my facebook page i'm a big fan of these polls that i do mm -hmm. um i'll kick off with one uh that i didn't didn't get to run it for long but it did look like it was going to carry on the same way um, and it was quite shocking to me because um, i believed opposite to what the majority was and so i posed the question uh, are couples marrying too early these days uh 66 percent said no and I was of the 34% that said yes. Um, and I only voted yes because I felt like I've been hearing a lot of stories. And again, unfortunately, it is a lot of here. But you, guess you hear a lot of stories about young couples getting married, trying to do the right thing. Uh, and then they get married and the reality hits them. Or you know, for the male, there's just this huge responsibility. And they're both just in this unbelievable shock. Like, whoa, what? This isn't living at mum's anymore. What's going on here? You know, and then it, it's just a massive shock for them. And then all this conflict starts and, you know, they're butting heads. And next thing you know, they're probably in your office or, or, or calling up some sheikh and then complaining to brothers like myself or brother Dean or whoever it is that, you know, oh my God, I don't know what I've done. And no one's listening. No one's helping. So a question arises from that poll where I was thinking, Sheikh, how do we find a middle ground where we continue to encourage our youth to do the right thing in getting married and making things halal, which is fantastic. That's a positive we can see there. And at the same time, I guess, 
take their time in knowing a person to to make sure that they are with the right spouse and that they are going to be you know with the person that they want to be say five ten years down the track i mean i'm a, I'm a I look after the teenage program Alfred Oz College now, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And a lot of the boys ask me, you know, is, is, is it haram to have a girlfriend? It seems like a no-brainer. Like, come on, man, you're 15. You should know this. But they're, they're, the follow-up is, okay, like, it, it's not. no, like, Sorry, like, it is. No problem. How am I meant to get to know a girl to marry her? And I'll say, you know what? It's It's... It's a very good question, but I guess if you do things the right way, whatever that is, when you speak to your f- parents, things will just happen. So, not only do I want to know, but I think there's a lot of people out there that also want to get this understanding too. I mean, how do we encourage our youth to, one, keep doing this, having this mentality where, yes, let's get married young, uh, do the right thing, because a lot of the times these days, they're meeting very young, 17, 18, 19, um, very rare what well, I've heard you know students that, that I've taught now uh, where they get to 20 and they haven't met a person yet or well, they're not thinking about marriage yet and it's like man just 20 and you want to no worries make it halal but I really want you to be sure I really want to make sure you're not heading down a path you're not rushing you're not going down a particular path where you know you're making a mistake here and, and you're gonna you know end up divorced and you know, as they say in, um, you know, in, in Lebanese colloquial, you know, and all that stuff. <laughs> so how do we find the middle ground, Sheikh? Well, subhanAllah, I, I don't think it's so much a, a question of age, mm. but a more of a question of maturity. Yeah. Okay, I think we should... So, mm. Can I cut you there mm. one second? Mm. I knew that was coming because someone wrote that. Oh, they did. <laughs> right, before, on, okay. on, on the poll, they said, oh, it's, it's about maturity. I, I, I agree, but also I disagree because you, with age, you get those runs on the board. Like you're, you're, you've lived a lot longer. Even if you've, say, 30 and you haven't experienced much, and the 21-year-old has experienced a lot and he's only 21, the 30-year-old, he's still been around for a long time. Even though he hasn't done a lot, he's still under, he's still, it's still a lot, you know, nine years ahead of the other guy in terms of just even just general dealings. Although the, the younger fella here might... I've experienced a lot more. How you know? I guess you still have the older person. It's a wiser head. You know, you, there are some things that time can give that experiences can't. Sometimes, mm. but um, where I probably would differ is that there's a lot of contributors towards um, towards that um, maturity. It, you could be thirty or forty years old, um, and. Uh, you might be very good at what you do in your your work and your job. So I, I have, for example, professionals that see me, like uh, engineers mm. and doctors, and sometimes I'm very embarrassed. Well, this was more 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 so the case in my earlier years of counselling. I'm thinking, I I can't believe you know these individuals are asking me these questions. How long have Should, you been doing it for now? Sorry, uh, about fifteen years. Fifteen years. Oh, wow. So, and I I remember uh, you know some of the questions that were being asked, and I thought, you know, am I really getting asked these questions? Mm-hmm. Um, these are like professionals. These are academics. You know, surely they would know. But then, with 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 experience, um, you know, you you learn that there are contributors as to why these individuals um, are in a toxic relationship or mm. a challenging relationship. So, in in their case, age didn't mean anything. It could well be that, for example, they just had no idea about relationships or mm. about um, uh, what a, a, a healthy marriage should look like. Maybe they don't understand the opposite gender. Maybe they come from a, fa- a family that's very toxic. Um, familiarity is something that's, um, that's really, really big that I find in a lot of um, the cases that I, that I work with is that you find that the challenges and, uh, are coming from, uh, from their parents, or what they're familiar, what they have seen in mm. their in their environment, or their surroundings, or their friends, their influences, who they're associating with. So therefore, you know, you could have a twenty-one year old um, um, who grew up with with a with a mother and father who were in a very loving, warm relationship, mm. and the child's number one teacher 
is their parents. Hundred percent, right? Yeah. So now imagine you've only had you're 19, you're 20, <clears throat> but all your life is all you know is you've got Affection a you've got a father like yeah. a companion yeah. or like the Prophet Sallallahu You have a, a a mother who who is like the mothers of the believers, mm. and and. And all you see is you see that companionship, you see that affection, you see the appreciation, you see the gratitude, you see the love in its various form. That's very powerful in comparison to a person who's 30 years old mm. and he's only been ever interested in a career because and, and becoming maybe a doctor or an engineer or whatever it might be yeah. because that's what he's seen his father or his mother be. So that's why I, I was saying it's more of an issue of maturity mm. and not so much the number. And, you know, let's go back to our forefathers who got married at a young, at a young age. Mm. And even the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he encouraged marriage, who who did he address? The youth. The youth. Mm. He said, Ya ma'ashara al-shabab. Shabab. Man istata'a minkum ul-ba'a falatazawaj. He said, O oh, youthful ones, whoever has the means to get married should get married. Right? So he addressed the youth. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, knows who he's addressing. Mm. Okay, so he said, "Man istata'a min kumul ba'a." Here, mm. istata'a is the ability, and it could be financially. Are you ready? Are you ready to give a woman her rights? Are you ready, um, you know, to be to be a man, to man up? So, mm. I think, I think um, that the challenge these days is more so in um, number one. Uh, I would say the the knowledge. You, I think you 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 were asking what is. A, a contributor yeah. is not, not having the knowledge mm. of what are what are the rights and obligations. Yeah. Um, what are the needs? Uh, you know of 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 my opposite. You know, you know, opposite. Uh, you know, my spouse. Mm. So, so we, ha- you know, understanding the different nature. You know, understanding that you can't treat um, your wife the way that you treat your friends, your buddies, your mates. A woman can't expect to be talking to a man the way she talks to or, or um, to to her 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 you know best friends mm, and and, mm. and the way they're so social and you know men are so more direct and just yeah. you know just give me the abstract, don't yeah. give me that yeah, 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 you yeah. know. So I think, you know, a lot of it. I mean, look, look at countries like, um, you know, um, Malaysia, for example, or Singapore. Mm-hmm. Um, in these countries, you're not allowed to get married without having completed some sort of, uh, you know, um, course, quick course, you know, on marriage. I was, I was going to ask that later, but okay. seeing how you brought it up, <laughs> do. You, while we're on the topic, do you think we should have a similar thing? Uh, I mean, do do do. do Sheikh, like yourself, need to tell people when they call them up and say, uh, I want to book you in next week, etc. Should they be turning around saying, no problem, one condition. you got to sit with me twice, three times for a couple of hours and we're going to go through some points. I think to make it a condition, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit challenging for mm. a number of reasons. And, and I, I won't go there right now with that. But... To answer your question, um, one of the things that I do, like let's say, for example, I'm booking in a marriage, when I send out an email with a form to fill out and some details mm. and you know about the confirmation of the booking, what have you, I actually include, hey, I do offer pre-marriage counseling. Um, you know, if you're interested, you know, contact me, I'll book you in. So basically what it is, you know, they come to the office and we sit for an hour or so mm. and it's just like give them some notes and we just cut to the chase and we're saying, look, guys, you know, this is what this is what healthy marriages are about. This is the cream of the crop. Yeah. We're not there to give them a, you know, a massive course and no, you know, yeah. some people just don't have I that time. I think that's the, that's the idea that you might get though. It's like, oh man, I'm so busy already and like this guy wants to sit with me for two, three hours now. That's what right. But look, that this, if we look at the, the uh, statistics uh, in, in the Malaysian model, um, we see that um, uh, I think it was uh, in in the early, let me now try and like uh, gather my thoughts here and, re- and, and just remember some statistics. I think it was in the early 90s that um, divorce statistics, uh, the divorce statistic in Malaysia um, was somewhere um, in the high 30s, early 40s, high 30s, somewhere there, I can't, don't quote okay. me exactly, yeah. but it was, you know, it was quite high. And so the, the Malaysian government said, look, we need to do something about this. And then they introduced mandatory, mandatory pre-marriage counseling. Mm. 
Now let's I love fast it. track. I love it. You yeah. love being to radio. I love it. <laughs> We're going to send people off to Malaysia. I love now this we can idea. do it here. I love but it's a beautiful idea. idea, beautiful concept. Let's fast track 10 years later. Guess yeah. what happened? The divorce statistics went down to about, I think it was like 9%. Oh, wow. That's, oh, I, that's I, just, I guessed half. Yeah, that's even that's less than half. That's huge. So what changed? Knowledge. Knowledge. Yeah. And, 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 and as Ibn al Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, that great scholar, he said at the foundation of all goodness are two things. Mm -hmm. You think about anything that's good, right? And why it's good and why it's doing well, okay, is for two things. It comes down to knowledge mm. and justice. Yeah. So you can have the knowledge, but you're not applying it. You're being unjust, mm. right? And then he said at the root of all evil and, and that which is bad and negative, he said, it comes down to two things. And it was the opposite of the first two things, ignorance, oh, ignorance and, and injustice. injustice. So um, <clears throat> this is, I believe, you know, especially for, especially for couples who are about to get married um, and they come from um, dysfunctional families, divorced families. They never really saw what a functional, loving family looks like. Mm. And there's a lot of them out there. Oh, of course. Okay. That's a reality. So how are they going to learn? How are they going to be this ideal husband or ideal wife when they have no idea? Mm. And as the Arabic proverbial goes, فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يَعْطِيهِ You cannot give what you haven't got. Mm. You can't be giving if you just don't have it. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. And subhanAllah, I had a case very recently um, where a brother, a brother came in and so there was a revert sister and an Arab brother. Mm -hmm. So he's a born Muslim. She's revert. She's from Oz. He's from overseas. So he's coming to this country and, you know, he wants to get married. And she's just become Muslim and she sees a Muslim guy and she thinks, wow, he's Muslim. He's Arab. A one plus one. It's, it's yeah. a no brainer. Yeah. Okay. So you know what? I'm going to marry him. Because he's going to teach me Islam. He's mm. going to be, he's going to save the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my man. He's my man. He's my Khalid and Walid. <laughs> so, so, you know, um, so subhanAllah, she, you know, she, and he, how does he look at her? She's a revert. And, oh, I, and yeah, I can learn yeah. from her, you know, a, lot, a thing or two. Guys, and I can yeah. help, her, help a sister out here. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I want to save the day as well. Right. So what happens, you know, they, they come in front of you and, they, and, and then she starts complaining about how abusive he is, uh, financially abusive, emotionally abusive, physically abusive. And you go, okay, man, this guy's a monster, right? Mm. And then you start listening to him and you listen to his story. The guy grew up with no, no parents. Yep. His parents were separated, divorced. He came to this country by himself. He's in survival mode and he's got... You know, and he just never really learned how to be a gentleman mm. and how to be a, a husband, right? And he's found himself in this toxic marriage. And now he's basically crying. He's basically begging, saying, hey, look, now that he's now that they're in front of me and mm. I'm saying, hey, this is wrong and this is what you need to be doing. And this is she's already now she's already um, checked out. Mm. OK, and he's now begging for a second chance. And I looked at both of them. I remember saying, wow, like you guys are both victims of your own circumstances. I actually felt like, you know, I, I felt sorry for both of them. Mm. Um, he didn't really want to abuse her. He just, he just didn't know what to do in mm. different situations because he didn't have the knowledge. And she didn't know that she's probably marrying somebody that she shouldn't be with because she didn't have the knowledge and she didn't have the due diligence. And this is unfortunately the case with many of the sisters who yeah. are reverts. Um, they're very vulnerable and they think, you know, and this is why, you know, reverts should really, really be careful when it comes to getting married and these men who can take advantage of them. Do you feel like, um, I mean, okay, how does someone, I guess, get that background knowledge before getting into the relationship? I mean, just based on what you said and even what we were saying before, it's a huge thing. It's a huge factor, you know how you've grown up and what you've seen throughout your life to be normal and then what they see throughout their life which they presume normal and then I guess if you mix the two I guess if you mix two opposites together you end up with this really toxic thing um, but had they known they might have been more understanding towards each other like what you were just saying there if 
maybe in this case if she had understood oh you know what he's okay he's come from here he didn't have this he didn't have that i can understand why he's like that i need to approach him this way the next time something happens to try to maybe fix the solution then same with him like okay she's like this she's come from a family that you know very different they don't understand you know usul or whatever it may be i need to have this sort of approach but in saying that, I, I mean, how do you get the full picture, potentially, or background check on someone before you even get married? And I, I mean, is it even okay to ask someone that much detail about their life? Absolutely, it's yeah? okay. I've got in my, I run uh, marriage workshops, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from time to time. I do like one day seminars or even in my uh, Uh, pre-marriage counseling i've got a 250 pre-marital questionnaire wow and that's um that's something that's like that's a lot like well no you don't have to ask all 250 (laughs) questions but you know you you've obviously you know you highlight what's important to Mm. you from the different areas of life and as you're going through them you see when you're in that uh that engagement period you're in that honeymoon period you're in that novelty everything's fantastic everything you know (laughs) nobody nobody ever sees it coming you know no Oh, no. And it, and it could be just uh, uh, it could be just one thing that you overlooked that was actually important to you, but you were just in la la land, mm. or you know you were just uh, so overwhelmed with the joy of getting married yeah. that you missed some uh, a very important uh, you know piece of uh, information. So I think um, you know really gathering your thoughts in in what you want, and I think one of the things that I always say to couples is that you need to know what you want. So you don't end up getting what you don't want. Mm. So it's really important that you know what do you want? What are your needs specifically? What are your needs on an emotional level, mm. on a physical level, spiritual level, financial level, social level? What do you want? Because you need to answer that. You need to know what you want, so you don't end up getting what you don't want. Also, you know, so that the other person knows has a very clear picture of mm. your vision. And, you know, there could be some real deal breakers um, as far as the the other person is concerned in yeah. terms of your needs. So I think um, communication is key in the very beginning, communicating mm. those needs. Um, and I think there needs to be more of an awareness in the community um, uh, from um, you know, from the scholars, from um, I, I think I think that awareness really should start from about you know year eleven, year twelve, those senior years, okay. um, when they're about to exit. When those um, and that's something I've been thinking about is is running a program for the high schoolers. Yeah. Um, that to say, look, you know, as you as you're transitioning to you know, to the world and uh, whether it's college or, you know, university or the workforce mm. or what have you, you know. Um, the interactions The interactions, uh, you know, you're going to be intermingling, you know, coming across the opposite gender. Um, what do you do? How do you know you've seen the right one? How mm. do you know he or she yeah, is Mr. Yeah. or Mrs. Right? Yeah. What are the questions to ask? Is chemistry important? Um, so, you know, we have cases whereby, you know, arranged marriages or, or parents recommending yeah. uh, a spouse. Um, okay, fair enough. They can recommend, they can try and arrange a marriage, but are you really compatible um, so, you know, what questions, you know, what about when it comes to attraction? So, for example, I've had many cases whereby, you know, all the boxes are ticked except for one box, and that's the attraction, attraction. box, right? If that box Does it is, override everything? It abs- absolutely, absolutely does. Because the Prophet Sallallahu even made it clear in, in when one of the companions so got engaged or married to a woman, did you look at her? And he said, he said, he spoke about the women of the Ansar and how the women of the Ansar had small eyes. And, mm. you know, generally men are attracted to, you know, women with larger you know, larger eyes. eyes. Mm. And and so, subhanAllah, um, so, so uh, you know, he says to me, and so I had one case, for example, where the brother was, you know, married. He's got, you know, a couple of kids or so. Um, and... And then, and then he's he's still not attracted. And saying, look, you know. And then that's two, two or three kids down the yeah. down the line. What do you do? what do you do in a situation he got like divorced. that? He just he couldn't got divorced. he couldn't stay. And imagine how you know how heartbreaking that he just couldn't do it. But don't you think over time, I mean, generally, all, like all these people get over it. Well, I, like it sounds well, like a broken record to me, you know, without mentioning names, <laughs> get anyone yeah. in trouble. But you know, all these people that have been married for years, they they will tell you, you know. Generally, I get told, oh, look, man, you know, you get over the looks. Course, you well, see well, past well, it, you get over it. 
Mm. And then it's, it be- becomes no longer this thing. And then I think to myself, oh, it's like, man, it was so important in the beginning. It's like you said, it's like a deal breaker. But I, I'm talking like there was never attraction from the beginning. Even from the start. I'm not talking about, uh, look, there has to be some sort of spark from the beginning. Mm. And uh, even when the scholars, when they speak about the criteria, yes, we know that one of the criteria is din, mm. right? So what they say is, the first thing that you look for is are you attracted? There's no point talking about the din because if you go, if you make din the first point and then you go second point is attraction, it's like you've rejected the person for the din. Mm. Okay. So I think this is something to uh, be mindful of. Like even the attraction, is there attraction there? Is there chemistry? Mm. You can't manipulate um, chemistry. There's something that you cannot manipulate. Um, so, you know, look, you know, asking people, um, uh, about uh, uh, you know due diligence is very very important and this is why we have in Islam we have isti- istishara istishara is the seeking the counsel and the guidance of other people mm. so you know for those who are about to get married yes number one I would recommend um, doing some sort of course you know learning through there's books in Islamic bookstores yeah. on this topic um, or when it comes to you know what should you be looking for in an ideal <coughs> spouse uh, what should you be what 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 are the contributors to a healthy, long-lasting marriage? Um, then you'd go to, um, you know, after the knowledge, and you, you know, you'd ask people about that person. You know, you get some who was going to vouch for this some person. Some background, yeah. Some background. Then I would. That's the istishara, and then you do. Um, then you do the istikhara, which is the, the istikhara prayer. You pray mm. to rakat. You do the du'a. It's found, you know. And then, and um, then you look for any <coughs> red flags that Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istikhara is not about having this, you yeah. know, weird and wonderful. I was going to mention if you can elaborate <laughs> on that because we do. You do get a lot of people, uh, and in particular myself again. Like I said, uh, teaching at for those college, alhamdulillah. A lot of these kids, like, uh, you know, I'm meant to see, you know, my friend said he saw a dream of this person approaching him saying, do it. <laughs> and, you know, Just do it. and he got, and then he got, and he got engaged and it didn't work out. You know what happened? Yeah. And I was like, it's got nothing to do with the dream, man. I don't know what he saw there, but pff, it's got nothing to do with that. I mean, Look, let's keep it simple, inshallah. With regards to the istikhara prayer, it's, you know, you pray to rakat. Uh, any two rakat apart from your fard prayer. No. Apart from the fard prayer, you pray two rakat. Okay, with your wudu, just like you would pray any normal two units of prayer. And then when you finish the prayer, you open up Fortress of the Muslim. You Google the du'a thing, yeah. Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmika, etc. To the end. And then that's it. And then what's going to happen? You've already done the due diligence. Mm. You've already done the istishara, the consultation and everything. You've given it your best. You've gone, you've done your, your research about relationships, right? Then all of a sudden, red flags start to pop up. Mm. Okay. You then, for example, bump into someone and you start talking about this other person. They say, oh, that person. Mm. What, you, what can you tell me? Mm. Well, one, two, three. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Allah. Yeah, you know, yeah. you just sent me a sign. You sent me a sign. You sent me some, you know, and that's where the red flags start popping mm-hmm. up. It could be one red flag. It doesn't have to be, you know, that's enough for you to, you know, not pursue this. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and some people, what they do, they get other people to do istikhara prayer for them. There's no oh, such wow. thing as getting other people to do it. It's your issue. Yeah. And if you look at the wording and the pronouns in the istikhara prayer, Allahumma inni astakhiruka. Mm. I'm, I'm asking, ya Allah. Mm. Allahumma in kana hadha al-amr khayrun li fi dini wa ma'ashi etc if this is good for me and my well-being etc so i think you know we really need to start to not only we need to learn but we need to unlearn Mm. And relearn. Yeah, 100%. you know, I think it's about learning, unlearning, relearning. You know what is best for us. And look, I, I think one one of the things that I see a lot in the community and through the counselling is that, yeah, look, you know, a lot of us, a lot of you know, couples have just married on 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 superficial grounds. Um, they were just hasty. They just yeah. wanted to get married or complete half of their dean. Mm. Well, you know, you're probably doing a lot more damage than good. And, yeah. um, and um, you know, there is a Islamic, uh, you know, a principle or maxim that says, Dar'ul mafasidi muqaddamun ala jalbil masalihi. To ward off the harm and the evil is better than trying to bring about goodness. No. So we, we don't want, you want to try and bring about good, but it's better to ward off, ward off the, the harm and mm. the evil first. <clears throat> Um, and that's going to happen through doing your due diligence and and, and, istikh- and istishara and mm. istikhara and knowledge and all of those things that we've been talking about tonight. Yeah, subhanAllah. 
SubhanAllah, look, definitely some good points there. Hopefully our um, listeners are writing these down. I know uh, I'll be looking back on the recording. Um, as we head to the towards the end of this first half, uh, I did, did say with you I want to split this into two. Um, the other poll I went through... Uh, I'm hoping this Another doesn't cause... Another sticky one, huh? Yeah, I, ho- I hope it one. doesn't cause any issues. You're, nah, you're a troublemaker, Noor. Shouldn't, shouldn't. Um, <laughs> but I look, you know what? A few people did want me to just be honest with it. Look, when you're dealing with all these cases, uh, people that are coming up to you with this divorce and um, issues that they might be facing, I asked, is fitna in the community? And when I say fitna, I mean... Uh, the way we're dressing, the way we're we're looking, or we're going about ourselves. Uh, I mean, it's no secret uh, that you know the the day and age we live in now. Uh, we're seeing you know the 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 covered but naked signs where women are somewhat supposedly covered, you know, in a hijab, but ridiculous, you know, this, this amount of makeup and tights and tight jeans or tight clothing, um, you know, with the guys so much effort and so much pride in the way they look you know it goes both ways and this is also affecting females as well i mean is this fitna being such a such a force you know harming couples leading them towards wanting you know or desiring other things leading them towards divorce i, I in the poll i had 71 percent of the people say yes Mm. That yeah, this this fitna and my belief is these people could be personally suffering from this. I mean, not that they want a divorce, but it could be affecting them and their marriage. Where you know, I have this beautiful lady at home. That's my wife, or this you know beautiful husband at home. That's my husband. Then I go outside and I see this other person. You know, that's the same sex as them, who you know who spends all these hours in the gym or all these hours you know spending money on on all these flashy clothes etc cetera, etc cetera. same with the girls you know looking completely different to what i instruct my wife to look and then it's like oh you know the desires are natural you know a man's always going to incline to to a particular look um same with a female you know for guys uh, muscular and more masculine etc cetera, etc cetera, she's going to potentially be more inclined to that is I mean, do you find that a lot of people maybe open up in the in the counselling that oh, you know, I found he was interested in uh, a woman opposite to what I look, you know, and, and she dresses this way, and that's that's incorrect, you know, according to our religion. Or he found her you know, being attracted to a man that's, you know, I mean, taking too much time and pride in in how he looks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What have, from your experiences? What have you found? If I'm going to speak just from my my personal experience and mm. my interactions with couples, I mean, what I experience is infidelity. Um, and infidelity, when we say infidelity, infidelity um, isn't just about, um, I mean, infidelity these days have a, has a wider dis- definition that it once used to have. Mm. I mean, once upon a time, infidelity could have been, you know, um, in having an intimate relationship yep. on, a, on, a, on a more sort of sensual, you know, touch you know level yeah um but in this day and age i mean you know you've got dating sites you have social media yeah. interactions yeah. um um you have pornography um and you find we find that yes there are um complaints um coming with regards to um to the um you know in in this in, that's that's a form of infidelity mm. because now you're you're interacting with the opposite gender, mm. and of course, how do you think it's going to start? It's going to start with a picture, um, with a, you know an image or, or what have you. Um, so so you know, I mean, Alhamdulillah, Islam does teach us to lower our gaze. Yeah, and I think you know the the reminder to myself and to all of us is that yeah it's an address to both the males and the females yeah yeah 100%. you know yani the verses are very clear about lowering the gaze mm. so why is allah azza wa jal reminding us about lowering the gaze and this is an advice that's applicable to the end of time mm. so i think we as um you know and and, and it's it's becoming it's becoming harder and harder with yeah. social media. 
you know. I mean, I was going to say, like, we're just, you're just so engulfed these days. Absolutely. And we, uh, look, and, like, and, I'm and, about and, to walk in, I'm walking into brick walls. And, you and, know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and I think, um, I think, but then again, we, we've become desensitized to a lot of it, but then there's always, you know, and, and I think the, um, you know, those people, you know, there are, there are people out there who know that, who know that we're becoming desensitized yeah. and then they know how to get us from other ways because the shaitan knows how that's, to, that's, the, that's his job. That's yeah. his job, right? He's been doing it for a long time and he knows the strategies. Um, so I think, yes, the key is, is, is to lowering the gaze. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> to say that, you know, to say that I have a lot of these cases, mm. I, I personally don't, I personally don't, mm. um, um, you know, have a lot of these type of cases. And often, often a time, um, you know, if there is infidelity, often it's because there's all, they are, they're probably one or the two are already finding themselves in a toxic marriage yeah. or, you know, there is a need that's not being met. So there's a, there's an underlying problem mm. why the infidelity at any level is occurring. And it might not be, um, it not might it may not be purely because of the fitna, um, but that and again it's open, it's available, um, it makes it easier, um, and I think um, we have a duty to um, to safeguard ourselves, you know, from this fitna mm. and to you know when it comes to, for example, um, social media accounts between husbands and wives, I believe there should be transparency. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a way around this, so that you know, um, you know, be careful who you're befriending. If you know, you shouldn't be befriending the opposite gender. Um, uh, in terms of like, when I say opposite gender, I'm talking about, um, you know, you know, uh, I'm not you talking, have no idea, yeah, yeah, like you, you've you're never even, seen or even your met. cousins, or yeah. even like it could be opposite gender in terms of a cousin. Mm. But you know, um, you, you have to be very careful. It's a mm. very, it's a very touchy, yeah, yeah, yeah. touchy, sensitive topic. But I think um, my message is sort of coming across in that you know you've got to be transparent with your with your spouse. Mm. And I think you know the moment that you start to um, you know um, hide things from your spouse. Mm. Um, and look, uh, one thing I've learned from experience is that it always comes out at the end. Yeah, it does. It always comes out. I mean, especially with males. We're not very good at hiding things. I can tell you that. <laughs> helpless, okay, yeah. women's intuition is so. P One thing I've learned from my, you know, my, um, you know, sessions is that uh, a women, a woman's intuition is very powerful, guys. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and it just, uh, you know, don't think you're going to get it. out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a woman's intuition is is, is so powerful, mm. and you know, um, you you know, you will, you know, nine times out of ten get caught out. You mm. know, if not more than that. Um, it's not worth it, you know. You've really got to ask. You know, you're disobeying Allah in the first, in first and foremost yeah. by doing that. Yeah. You're being disloyal to your, to your, you know, your loving spouse. Um, you're about to break up your family. You're going even and even if you repent, even if you repent, and even if you, uh, if you do the right thing, um, um, that's it. You've cre you you forever you've forever created maybe an insecurity, maybe uh, an insecurity in your spouse. Yeah. Um, you've created some doubt. You've created, and then that's another challenge that you're going to have to deal with. Okay, yeah. that will come up from time to time. Um, so uh, you know, prevention is better than cure. Yeah, Don't put yourself definitely. in that position. Mm. Um, and 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 um, you know, I think you know you need to play the role that Allah. Uh, has defined for you, and uh, as a, as a husband, and you the you the wife needs to play your role uh, as a wife as defined by Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that's really the the key here is to is to be is to be playing our roles as a husband and as a wife as stipulated in the Quran and in the mm. Sunnah of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And and following those injunctions, and as Allah Azza wa Jal says, uh, that if they do as they have been admonished, that is better, better for them. Mm. It's better for us to always be doing, to always be bettering ourselves. Um, inshallah, looking at the bigger picture, um, 
and not looking at this uh, superficial superficialness that is going to be fleeting very very quickly. Mm. Um, it's like a trend. I mean, it does phase out like trends. Absolutely, absolutely, it does, and it's not worth it. And you need to think about your children. You need to think about your akhira. You need to think about you know how think about it. Uh, I, one of the things I do say to couples is that you know treat your spouse the way that you would want your future um, you know son-in-law or daughter-in-law um, to treat your child. Yeah. You know, how would you want someone to treat your child, mm. whether it's son-in-law yeah, or daughter? As, as best as possible. Of course. Yeah. You know, you gave them the most beautiful upbringing. You spent so much, you know, time, energy, money, emotions, what have you on them. And then somebody comes and just, you know, you know, abuses them. Yeah. That is so hurtful. Yeah, it and is. And then yeah. you become that person. You become that person. Like, how dare you? Yeah. Yeah, subhanAllah. Um... Look on that point. I was gonna. I was gonna stress a little bit on the on the <laughs> on the. Go for it. Go part. for it. Go for it, Noor. Because you know, you know what? I He's look, pumped. <laughs> yeah, look, a lot of the guys, and again, like um, being a Gen Y, dealing with a lot of Gen X brothers. It's. It, I mean, being engulfed in it, we see it a lot. I guess, Alhamdulillah, for you, you might be indoors uh, with all the cases that are coming your way, you know, because of this sort of thing. But I, I feel like. If the men were men, I don't think we'd be having this issue. Like I can't. I think a lot of brothers I speak to, they they say to myself, you know, they say to to themselves, and then me, you know, when we go somewhere and we see a particular outfit or we see something, um, we sit there and we say, I mean, it, it, who let them out that way, or how are they even allowed out of the house with this particular dress or? Who stopped them? You know, why didn't they get stopped walking out? Why didn't anyone say anything? And you might know that the person is married or that they, you know, they do have parents. You know, why aren't the parents, if they understand, you know, my, my daughter or my son or whoever it may be, you know, sibling, et cetera, is, is going out this particular way, looking all fashioned up. I mean, aren't they going to cause a problem in society? Like, don't they understand... People are are looking in that direction, and it's not, you know, it's not it's not a look that's praising and, and praiseworthy and, and nice. It's a look of, you know, lust and and and, and you know all this haram filled uh, thoughts, etc. For me, it, I, it just baffles me. A, a lot of a lot of the times, I think to myself, you know, a lot of this could be solved if if men were just being men. And were you know doing what they could in in their power with complete wisdom and kindness, etc. You know, just controlling what they can. A lot of this fitness would just kind of die off in a way. Or is that just being? Am I am I being too um, far fetched with the, with this dream that it could potentially disappear if if that was the case? You're definitely on the money. Definitely on point, uh, Uh Recently. Um, a parent, a mother was complaining about her son mm. who's married. And she said, you know, she goes, you know, what is it with these boys? You know, what is it? I go, you just said it. They're boys. Yeah. They're not yeah, men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, is it, is, it the, uh, is it the food that we're eating and the estrogen levels that are being increased? <laughs> I mean, that, that could be a contributor. Yeah. But, but no, but I mean, that, that, that's definitely maybe one contributor. But then the other, <laughs> con- the other major contributor would be, you know, your upbringing, which is your parents. That's, yeah. where, it all, that's, yeah. where, it all, that's where it all begins. And then there is the environment. So if we look at, if we look at, if you look at who you are as an individual, mm. Who you are as an individual has come to has come to be as a result of three things. The first thing is um, your environment. Environment plays a massive role. Yeah, you know. And what are you? You know, what are you? You know, what's your environment like? Is it? Is it? Is it Islamic? Is it? Um, you know, is it a pious one? Is it? Is it productive? Is it productive? Positive? positive mm. You know, toxic. What is it? Okay. That's the first one. The second contributor are your influences. Mm. Tell me who you are. Uh, tell me who. Uh, tell me who your friends are, and I will tell, tell you who, who you are. are. Yeah. You know, uh, friends are like lifts; they can take you up or bring you down. Mm. And the Prophet ﷺ he said, "Al maru ala 
ala dini khalilihi you know a person is on the the way or the faith of his close friend mm. okay so there's the environment there are your influences the people that you're associating with mm. so i get i get sometimes like a like a wife for example could be wife or husband let's call, let's, let's say a spouse yeah. that, come, that says yeah. to me look you know i'm not happy about this friend that he has or she has mm. and and then and then you know he would try and or she would try and justify oh no 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 you know but the the reason why they're concerned is because they know that person is not good mm. character for example or not on the faith or not is a is a bad influence mm. and that and i and i congratulate that spouse because that spouse has every right that that's a spouse that has boundaries mm. that has standards mm. right and so i congratulate that spouse for having those standards and having those boundaries and concern about who the friends are because those friends whether you like it or not you're probably going to get influenced yeah, more or likely let's let's yeah. let's call a you know a spade a spade as they yeah, say yeah. in australia Look, it's going to okay? happen yeah so there's the environment there is the um there's the influences and then the third contributor are your experiences okay what you go through is who what shapes you. what, <clears throat> yeah, what experiences yeah. have you had in life and that's why you spoke earlier about mm. you know you live a long time you should have all these experiences yeah. in, in this to get you to that you know yeah. wisdom and what have you well you know so there's a combination of things that make you who you are mm. um you know interestingly when you spoke about the men there, there's a very there was a very interesting you know picture that i saw on social media not long ago and it was a picture of two lions One yeah, was, oh I don't know God. if you've seen this I picture. Have, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're <laughs> There was a pretty boy lion, yeah, you know, yeah, those, yeah. you know, the pretty boy is like a, a slim, cut mane, cut, yeah. yeah, and he's, you know, he's really just slim lion, you know. <laughs> and then there's the lion. Yeah, you know, there's yeah, the man. That's right, you know, that's, the real lion. And that's what's going. This is exactly mm. why we're having a lot of problems. People just following trends and 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 the influences and mm. social media and what we are, um, the, the 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 messages that we're getting and and, and you know. So I was talking I remember talking about that on the first episode of Sheikh Nasim like something he mentioned which you know which is 100% true like we are natural conformists like we're we're always going to be influenced by something whether we like it or not it's just a matter of choosing the right influences but I, I believe what I found hard man in this in this day and age Sheikh it's it's really tough to find you know good role models or or people that um I guess ha- have a combination of a lot of things that you sit there and you say I want to be like them. I mean we can talk about the past. Uh, I mean it's everyone's aspiration inshallah to to want to be like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or his companions or salaf as-salih or some great com- you know scholars etc. But these days I mean I see people for example um mimicking particular rappers, right? Why? It's like why? Well, he's in front of them all the time. Absolutely, he's everywhere. He's all over social media, yeah. and he's dressing a particular way that's bringing, a, you know, this this type of attention to him. That heck, my nafs wants. It's it, there's nothing wrong with uh, liking money, for example. And this person's getting money. There's nothing wrong with uh, enjoying female companionship. This is what we were created for. And then you see that he has plenty of that and he has you know he can have a selection and then there's fame and he has influence etc etc so it's like he's a combination of things that this guy has and this is awesome and then there's not just him there's a huge number of them and then imagine the female side of things when they have millions of instagram flow- followers or hundreds of thousands of them etc looking a particular way it's like man how hard is it for now our community to, to kind of put that aside and say you know I, I don't want that. Okay, I'm going to stick with where's 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 Mr. Humble? Where's the humble guy who doesn't have as much as this and not as much influence, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all these things that my nafs wanting. And then for the female, you know, where's the modest girl that doesn't have 100,000 plus followers or a million plus followers that's not showing you know 90% of her skin, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, for me to want to be, be like and just remain grounded so to speak if we're so engulfed i mean how do we go about finding them well i think you know in this day and age we we're, we're made to believe that we're not enough mm-hmm. i think this is a big big problem mm. 
um, and I see that a lot in my office, that that um, people just don't think they're enough. And that, so they keep on pursuing this and pursuing that. And they keep on following the trends and they go, you know, from one thing to the other in terms of their looks, in terms of appearance, in terms of their possessions. And uh, subhanAllah, the only thing that's going to bring an end to that, as the Prophet Sallam, he said, is the grave. Yeah. Right? So we need to sort of, um, you know, we need to, and, and I think a lot of that's going to come back to the upbringing and to the parents mm. from, a, from a young age, really um, introducing those um, those heroes, the true heroes, yeah. you know, um, you know the, 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 the prophets and the messengers of God, of Allah mm. subhanahu wa ta'ala, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, the movers and the shakers, the, you know, the salah ad the, um, you know, um, and, and, all, and all of those, um, you know, greats uh, of the past. And even, you know, in present times, I mean, we find them in the, in the books, you know, mm. in the storybooks. We find them in the, the lectures and, 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 and the stories of the prophets and, 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 and companions. And we find them in, you know, in communities, in the masjids. Um, and that's where that's, that's where you find mm, men. If you really yeah. want to find men, mm. in, okay, you're going to find them in the masjid. Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think there's there's a verse in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the masajid. Uh, he said, and, and subhanAllah, when he mentions the masajid, the very first, I think, word that came in the next ayah, rijalun. Mm. He mentions rijal. La 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 him tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah. So he said, he spoke about the rijal. Mm. So mm. the rijal are found in the masajid. Is, is, uh, is that Surah Jum'ah? The... Uh, no, uh, the end, uh, the end where the, the A is talking uh, about Jum'ah. I'm not sure about if it's Jum'ah, but no, it talks yeah. about, يعني, uh, it talks about يعني, the masjid and, and it connects Rijal with the masjid. Mm. So if you really want to, if you want to want men, you know, you've got to ask yourself, you know, what's the father like in the home? You know, and then if you want to run a, a good, pious woman, look at to see her, her mother. And as the saying goes, um, and, and uh, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Mm. And and for me, when I sit with a lot of couples, I do ask uh, about their, their, you know, their past or their parents, because mm. that that's that speaks shapes a lot. It, 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 that influence and and the, and the environment. Mm. So, um, you know, I mean, personally, you know, um, personally myself as a father, um, you know, alhamdulillah, I'm I'm blessed with kids, and yeah. I have two, you know, two young boys at the moment. And for me, I actually look out in the community, and I look out and I see. You know who are who? Who do I want my my children to look to be like? That's right. Yeah. And believe it or not, there's a there are there's a lot of young Muslims in mm. the community that I've already earmarked, and I know that I'll be knocking on their door soon, saying, "Hey, I want my son to hang out with you. Yeah, yeah my son's going to hang out with me and take him to the masjid oh, and what course. have you, and you know, and do a, a, my own program. But I'm going to also be earmarking certain that I'm happy to even you know pay for their time mm. to just spend time with my child, just so my child can. I love their qualities. Mm. I love their mannerisms. Mm. I love their, 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 you know, their hard work. They're not lazy. I want my children to be like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, you've got to find those people in the community and you've got to take your child and say, hey, I want my child to mm. hang out with you. I mm. want it to be part of your center, part of your, I just want it to be a volunteer. Whatever it's going yeah. to be, you know. The def- I think there definitely is light at the end of the tunnel, anyway. Definitely I mean, is, but look, you know, you know what is it? Uh, seek and you shall find. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, when when you really want something, it's, Subhanallah. Before you know it, it's everywhere. You know, you mm. buy a yellow car. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> how often does that happen? <laughs> and then oh. you think you got the only yellow car, but then <laughs> you just see him popping up everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. You know, if you really want something, you will find it. Subhanallah, hundred percent right. I think. Um, I'm going to move along now. Uh, we're going to steer away from, um, say, marriage and divorce. Uh, hopefully no one's too upset with that. But um, another topic that I, I mentioned to you just today, so hopefully I haven't caught you off guard, but something that's been on my mind a lot where you know, I've, always, I've always been thinking like, man, as, as, as a community, we should look after each other more. I mean, you hear all these stories about other communities that like they'll only go to their own butcher. And they'll only go to their own, uh, you know, grocer, or they'll only use their own carpenter and their own bricklayer, and this and you know, their own, their own, their own. Everything's kept within this, you know, nice little circle. And then you come, to, <laughs> you know, 
I don't, I don't want to sound like Mr. Negative, but then you kind of come towards our community and it's like, man, I don't want to deal with, no way, like, work for, for a Muslim guy, like, no way, like, <laughs> get, get this uh, Muslim carpenter man, all I know him, like, never, never will I get him, no, you're serious, and you go back and forth and it's like, man, like, how could we encourage each other and how do we find this solution where it's like, let's just support each other, let's get together, let's, you know, um, I mean, I remember seeing this beautiful photo on social media. It's like, you know, when you're supporting small businesses or the local guy down the road, you're not supporting the the massive corporation owner or manager or GM, whatever it is, by his third investment house now. And, you know, you're not helping invest in all these other projects, etc. When you go to that local grocer, like you're helping this guy pay for his kid's school fees. You're helping him now pay to put petrol in his car, you know, that his day to day living. He doesn't need I mean like that that guy, your your twenty dollars that you spend there every couple of days is far more valuable to, you know, man X over here who's your local grocer that's within your community from the same, you know, way of thinking compared to, you know, big corporation over here. You know, that's gonna probably use your twenty bucks to go and uh, you know, invest in, in more interest and, and uh, you know, buy a 10th house, so to speak. So, you started Dalil recently um, and the platform's fantastic in my opinion. Um, it's getting a lot of businesses, especially, you know, Islamic businesses and, and organizations on board so that we kind of have one nice little portal to go to when we want to use it. Um, what was the main reason if you can elaborate a little bit on it behind you starting Dalil. So, um, D- Dalil, um, Dalil is, uh, is a platform for the Muslim community. And by the Muslim community, at the moment, we've uh, launched in Australia, mm. inshallah, but we are um, about to transition internationally. So, what Dalil is, it's a pretty much a one-stop shop for the Muslim community, mm-hmm. um, whereby it's a it's your uh, Google, I guess, of, of the Muslim community. So you could be looking up, you know, a tradie, a professional. Um, you're looking for an event. Um, it's a, going to be a marketplace where you can actually, you know, buy, sell, earn mm. money. Um, you know, there's going to be curated um, articles, um, uh, especially in a day and age whereby we have certain platforms that 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 main that you know that we use on mainstream um, internet that are being censored. Um, so we really, I felt that there's a need to have a one-stop shop um, whereby the Muslim community can support one another because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does say, ala birri wa taqwa, mm. support uh, one another when it comes to goodness. Um, and I think one of the one of the inspiring contributors, I guess, um, to Dalil is, um, is that when I was personally doing some, some, you know, some renovations and I really wanted to, to help the Muslim right. community. Yeah. I thought, you know, I know that there's Muslim tradies. So I remember, you know, there were, you know, there were, there were some disaster stories, you know, yeah. some, yeah. some, you know, from some, but that's, that doesn't only apply to our own community as Muslims. Mm. It's, it's also in other communities. And I've experienced that looking, you know, looking into this. Yeah. Um, and the good thing <clears> about Dalil is that we will have um, reviews. So I really would like for, for, um, for our professionals and our tradies to be more responsible, mm. because if you want to be on the Dalil platform, then you're going to be rated and then, you know, people are, can have their say. So, um, so Dalil, um, D- Dalil is about, um, you know, being able to find a, a good tradie. So when I was, uh, I found some good tradies and I was dealing with some people and I started getting introduced to certain suppliers, mm. like building materials. And that I came across some of the most amazing people and I thought I've never heard of, mm. and I I would go down the road to some other you know um, or you know supplier hardware store, hardware whatever, store yeah. what have you, and and I thought wow there is actually a Muslim company who is doing a fantastic job mm. right, and.
And there were some of these, I'm talking about big players here. Like mm. I'm talking about players that were buying masjids. Mm. And I it, thought... Can I mention a name or you think yeah, better not to? Better not to for okay. now. For now. I, think I, think I, I think I know who it yeah, is. <laughs> so so I w- here I am they dealing... They do some fantastic Yeah, work, so I'm yeah. dealing with this... I was they're doing amazing. The help that they gave me, mm. the customer service was second to none. Mm. Right? And I thought, how dare I not be supporting these Muslim organizations that are doing a fantastic job. These are organizations that are that are giving zakat, yeah. that are giving sadaqa, yeah. that are building masjids, that are that are that have got families that they're feeding mm. and these families are paying their zakat and they're building families. Yeah. And I thought, wow, oh, imagine oh. a hub, imagine a platform where I can gather ev- all the Muslims because there's a lot of these Muslims that don't have websites. Mm. There's a lot of these Muslims that a lot of the Muslim ladies, they have their own, um, they have their own businesses running from home, mm. you know, whether it's the cakes or the clothings or the, you know, yeah. the, the bonbonniers yeah, or what yeah, have that's you. Right. They're doing a great job as well, mm. right? I thought, I want to have a platform that I can showcase and I want it to be look you know, to really look amazing. Mm. So we've 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 released um we, we've l- released the first phase, which is a, a directory, um, events and and also um, articles. But we've got Subhanallah. We've actually now created, and this is all we're in the transition phase. To be honest with you, so okay. if you want to stay updated, you have to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, so you're both. You're so on both, are you? That's right. So if you follow at the moment, it's Dalil Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the 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 upcoming website is going to be called dalil.global that's just okay, our website awesome. dalil.global at the moment i think we're dalil uh, dalil.com.au mm-hmm. but 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 the thing is we've actually got our own events page now imagine having an events page where you can actually buy tickets sell tickets as an mm. organization mm-hmm. um, manage your manage your, manage your tickets you can look up events for children you can look up where each shows are anywhere mm. in australia anywhere in the world as we're transitioning. Yeah. So I just wanted a one-stop shop, an ecosystem for the Muslim community, um, just an, and where Muslims can actually showcase, um, become sponsors. You can have a free, you can have a free listing. And I just thought this would be such an amazing, and there's proceeds from the, any income that Dalil makes, mm. proceeds, um, percentages go to the, the poor and the needy around the world. Know. You know, on, on that, uh, I guess it'll be hard, hard to answer this. Um, it's quite hard to measure. But how important is it to really have our own kind of circle of uh, businesses and organizations that we deal with, especially as a minority in this country? Um, And in a lot of countries, I guess, around the world, if you exclude the Middle East, of course, where we are a minority and this sort of thing kind of helps build our community and it helps advance us and, and gets us, you know, moving forward sort of thing and again i know it's it's very difficult to measure um and give i guess you know an indication but i mean in your opinion if you can elaborate how important do you think it is for the muslim community to to have this sort of thing i think it's very significant especially that you know um islamic guidelines uh, islamic teachings sharia does not allow us to you know purchase um properties um, through riba, through mm. interest in usury, and so um, we need to really support our own, even if it's just so we can become a stronger community. Yeah, um, to be able to buy a, a home, mm. to be able to buy um, properties, um, and as Muslims, we like to work with each other, not because we're, we've got anything against the non-Muslims, no, 100%. but because, and even on on the on the Dalil platform. You, we might find some um, some services mm. whereby um, are, are, are Muslim friendly because th- we just they don't exist. Mm. For example, already in the Muslim community, right? Mm. So, so I think Muslims like to deal with their own kind, maybe. Mm. And even one of the one of the the areas that we've included when you're adding a listing is what languages do you speak? Oh, good idea. Yeah. So, what languages yeah. do you speak? What sort of environment do you have at your restaurant? Mm. You know. Um, you know, Muslims want to know uh, they they feel inclined to speaking you know the same language. Yeah. There's the people that are coming yeah. uh, um, into Western countries that are tourists. Yeah, I mean, if you bring in family from overseas, overseas, you, you wanna, know, you, you want to know, know where do I go? Um, so you know, it's it's so important for us to really be 
to create our own uh, Muslim ecosystem yeah. to get stronger. We can help build um, Islamic infrastructure, be it schools. Mm. Instead of always asking, you know, we always build, have our own banks, yeah. um, you know, that are that are not so uh, riba, uh, <clears throat> that are not riba based, based mm. that can support the Muslim community to buy homes, mm. to buy businesses, to lease cars. Yeah. This is all needed. Yeah, it is. And, it and is. we've got to get real here. When you're living in the West and we, we're very confined Mm. because of our sharia guidelines mm. so you know dalil is about you know really uh, 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 um, you know uh, providing that platform for the community to grow mm. to grow together um, where there is accountability um, that you got to do a good job to stay on the platform mm. inshallah ta'ala so yeah do you feel like um, look there's always going to be negativity with anything that people do in their life but do you feel like a lot of people have come across negatively towards you when you were doing this like i mean it's such a, a common thing we hear unfortunately i don't i don't agree with it by the way i don't know we've had great experiences with with tradies but you know people just coming up and saying it's, it's not going to work because this guy's a crook and that guy's a liar and this guy's like that you know etc cetera, etc cetera. you're going to have them deal with people and then they're going to backstab this guy and you're not going to have that many businesses and um or even the the size of the platform itself i mean we're according to the abs about what half a million muslims in australia i mean how big could it possibly go and you know all these sort of things i mean in regards to the negativity that you might have received have you felt like like some of it could be true or how maybe how do you feel like you would overcome those those things i mean you, you did mention you're going to have reviews we've got reviews we've got the star ratings yeah um we've got um you know people can report a business mm -hmm. so you can report a business um look there's always you know and, it, and like i said it doesn't only apply to the muslim community how no, do no, you know yeah, yeah. when you go to um you know another platform to hire a tradie that that tradie that you've just spoken to um, is going to be the real deal. Mm. How do you know? I mean, how many lawsuits are there? You know, are out there um, because of you know faulty you know workmanship mm. that's got nothing to do with the Muslim. That's it could right. have been any yeah. trading. So yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think we can't we can't we can't keep on. Yeah, there are lots of um, you know terrible tradies out there yeah. and they've got you know and they'll be they'll they'll, they'll get noticed uh, you know on, on the platform um there'll be there'll be cross checks um so i think you know we're trying to really create I mean, you know, we're trying to do that through. I mean, how does Google do it? Google does it through reviews and star ratings, yeah. and and even that's still, um, you know, that's still questionable yeah. because people could be dishonest. It could be just the jealous people. True. So, yeah. you know, we, we, we want to create. Um, you know, we, we're creating a platform um, that's really for the community. So, if we feel that you know there are people that shouldn't be on there, well, we're not going to hesitate to say, look, sorry, but you just, you know, we have actually one of the, you know, the conditions is that we can remove a listing mm. at any time any no questions time. asked mm. because well, we're not going to do that unless we feel that there is, is a, there yeah. is a good reason yeah, behind it um you know and i think um you know part of the part of the platform is you know basically like a like a quote my job so let's say for example somebody wants um I'm looking for a plumber to do this job for me mm. i'm willing to spend x amount of dollars right um, what Dalil does, it's already got the best of the best. So your message will actually go to the best of the best, maybe five, ten yeah. in that area. Uh, that you know they'll already go to them, and then you can actually choose based on their reviews and things like uh -huh. that. So there's a lot of tech. There's a lot yeah, of work yeah, yeah, going on in the back in the background just what to you, make this really amazing. What do you do as a Muslim? What would you? Uh, let's take yourself out of the Dalil circle for a second. How would you go about? Oh, There's one thing I always hear as well. How do you go about getting a quote or getting offered a service or going to a grocer that's a bit more expensive, a bit more dearer than, say, a bigger corporation or a you know, non-Muslim tradie, etc.? You get the two quotes. Okay, these guys are a bit cheaper. That's going to help my pocket out here. And I've got another quote here. Oh, you know, it's an extra 500 bucks, for example, or... You know, uh, going to a bigger corporation grocer compared to, you know, your local uh, Abu Fulan, you know, on the corner that sells all your generic stuff. 
is, is going to be a oh, 50 bucks difference now. And if I do this every week, it's really going to hurt my pocket. How can a Muslim kind of somewhat, somewhat go down the middle and... You know, like me personally, I make an intention that look, the extra I'm spending this is just sadaqah. And I'm going to continue to just pay that little bit more, keep trying to support this guy. Hopefully, uh, this extra money is going towards his kids' Quran school. Mm. You know, mm. wherever it may be. It could be going to his 10th property. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know these days, right? Um, whatever, but that's me, you know. So, I mean, how as a person who works hard and they got this money, it's like, oh, I want to keep my dosh. You've got to be realistic. You've got yeah. to be, look, in the How first instance. How far do instance, you go? Yeah, look, in the first instance, I'll definitely look at um, helping the Muslim. If, I, if I'm, alhamdulillah, cashed up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with that wealth and I'm happy to support the Muslim, mm. you know, go ahead and do that. You know what I mean? But if you, you're on a tight budget and maybe, maybe you know, the, the, middle, the, the middle ground would be, I'm going to help this organization in these certain products, mm. you know, um, but, it, but, but these, but these other products, um, that are sold in this larger, you know, or larger shop or, you know, uh, pr- corporation, you know, corporation yeah. or, you know, um, seller, um, you know, they, 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 they basically, um, you know, are way cheaper. Well, mm. you know, I've got to look at my budget. I've mm. got to look at, and but, but at the same time, maybe be communicating, but then, you know, to this guy, but then this guy could be saying, well, you know, the reason why is I don't have the buying power that yeah, these people that these have. Guys, yeah. You know, so look, that's just, that's now the, you know, you've done your best. You've given it your mm. best shot. Okay. Um, so look, it, but it's not always going to be the case. Mm. Um, you know, it's not always the case. The majority of the times you should be finding some sort of good competition yeah. um, happening. Um, uh, I, I think if if you have to go elsewhere, well, you just have to go elsewhere. You haven't committed a sin. You yeah, haven't done yeah, anything course. haram. You shouldn't feel guilty. Mm. Just, you know, you, you can't, you've got, you're on a certain budget. How, maybe uh, based on the research you've done with Dalil and its potential growth, do you have any benefits off the top of your head that as a community we could potentially see if we do, let's say this, you know, we, we focus on looking after um, people in our own community and there's this, you know, inshallah, huge influx of people using the service you're providing through Dalil where, where Muslims are using other Muslims for services and uh, all these other things. I mean, what potential positives can we see, do you think, um, within our community if we if, if we really um take part in that sort of action collectively there's many fronts i guess you know there's um you know finding you know um someone that resonates with you there's that then that just that just the feeling that i'm working with i feel comfortable that when somebody comes to my home mm. let's say it's a trading let's use it as an example that they know the boundaries yeah they know you know how the etiquette uh, for yeah, example yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, it's no, little it's, things no, but okay? it's simple yeah, it's, it's something it's right. simple it's yeah. you know and very powerful mm. um it, and so that's there's you know, there is the, the 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 variety like dalil has got masjids on there as mm. well mosques you press a button for example it gives you all the nearby masjids mm. you press a button it tells you all the nearby halal restaurants mm. you press a button it gives you all the near butchers so there is you know um so there's it's 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 telling and and you've got the reviews and you've got the comments so there's that aspect of it you know like i said there is the events for the events on itself i find it so exciting okay you know we're talking before about where do we take our children yeah well a lot of us don't even a lot of people don't have facebook okay and a lot of people okay so for example now under the member for example mm. Such an such a great episode, and, and congratulations, and I wish you all the very best. I know, you, I know it's a, I know it's still in infancy stages, yeah. but inshallah, it'll go to greater heights. <laughs> five in. Okay, five, five, five runs on the board. There so. you go. Well done, congratulations. <laughs> but I mean, you know, um, um, who's really, you know, heard of? Not everyone knows under the member no. yet, but under I mean, is doing an amazing job. I'm giving an example of under the member. Up to today, years later, we come across this Facebook page and that's dedicated to a certain area that my family really needs, but nobody mm. knows about yeah. it. Yeah. So not no everyone, one's, on Facebook, no one's yeah. following every single Facebook page mm. to know about all the events. Mm. But imagine having one hub, one center mm. where all the events now, we're going to be sending like letters to all these different organizations saying, hey, put all your events here. 
And then now everybody that comes can choose by category. Mm. So whether it's the events, um, whether it's a quote, whether it's the marketplace, you want to come to a marketplace that you know that you know proceeds are going to sadaqa. So you're gonna have like a gum tree style yes, thing. Yeah. Yes, it's it's eBay gum gum tree at another level. Um, so we're not cutting corners here. We're, yeah. we're we're doing things properly, and percentages are going to sadaqa. Mm. And those sadaqa, we've got you know some. Imagine like you see a a building in the future, inshallah, that's been built by Dalil mm. because of your contribution. Okay, so we're all helping one another, inshallah, and we're strengthening the community. Yeah. We're providing um, a, a service. Uh, you know, why is it that, for example, we have Google, but we still have Yellow Pages? Mm. Why do we have yellow pages? Why do we have high pages? Why do we have all these different for the kids engines? to sit on when they go ahead? Uh, this <laughs> they they all work. Yeah, yeah. And, and and because people want you know, and especially our community, they want to work. They want to they want to work together, mm. but only if they know that what they're getting is you know they're getting a good deal. They're getting honesty, and inshallah, that's what we're aiming to provide. So I think it. Um, I, I, th- I think it's all. Um it's all in a positive direction, especially for our community. The way, you know, being a minority and all, I think it's super important. If we, you know, having this platform, we get to, you know, do all these trade transactions within each other. The money kind of stays within the circle. We kind of get to grow, um, strengthen ourselves. Potentially, we'll see, you know, more, um, maybe more knowledge facilities. You know, I'll, we could end up seeing, you know, family members and Cousins. Learn about each other's children yeah, and, and yeah, then get, yeah. get married. You know, the, one of the biggest complaints that we have since this show was mainly about divorce and marriage yeah, yeah, yeah. is that a big, big problem that I'm that I'm that we're facing in the community is where do we find what avenues do we have to find a spouse? Oh, there you go. You know, what avenues do we have? That's and this huge. is that's massive. That's another that's another podcast. I think you all, on its own, <laughs> all on its own. I think, but. You know, you know, do online, uh, you know, online sites, sites work? work? Do yeah. these, um, you know, what about Muslim organizations? What role can they play? What role can the mashayikh play? What mm. role can individuals play? Mm. Um, um, you know, a lot of people, a lot of singles, you know, ready to mingle, you know, but where, know where, do, where do they go? Where do they well, do, do it? Just quickly on that, my opinion <laughs> is, I think they, you find them like in a mosque, or if, you, if you're a person that's interactive in the masjid or... You know, interactive in in a in a um, work workforce full of knowledge, etc. Things like that. It's just gonna happen. And People will pick you out and say, "Listen, you know, I know me in particular. I have a daughter now. I'm thinking about these things. I know, like she's almost only two, but you think, okay, in X amount of years time, fifteen, whatever it is, years time, twenty years time. You think, okay, where am I gonna find the guy? Man, I wanna I wanna find him." In the front row, <laughs> you know, or right. second row of yeah. one of these yeah. places yeah. are like yeah. this. But like that's, I said, that's where you want. going back to Dalil, mm. with these interactions, we're going to learn about each other. Are you going to have a service like that on Dalil? I, not, not that I've, not, I haven't, I haven't planned that because your background you. and all that. I mean, it would be. Um, um, look, it, it's a, it's a tough one because yeah. it, it requires a lot of work. Mm. Um, it's something that I haven't given much thought because I've been focusing more on, you know, the 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 the, the vision that we've you know created for ourselves. But but in saying that, like I said, these interactions when you're interacting with your own kind, you're going to learn. Mm. You know, people ask, "Ah, uh, you know, right, yeah. where, where, where are you from? Ah, uh, you know, which family are you from? Or where do you where do you come? Which region? Which city? Oh, okay, yes, yeah." And it happens a lot. And then, oh, you married? Or oh, you know, um, I've got a daughter, or yeah. I've got a cousin, yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. um, oh, no, I'm looking to get married, or you know, you know, these when we interact with one another. Um, subhanAllah amazing things are going to happen I think um, we get to know one another inshallah better inshallah Tayyip um, unfortunately we have come uh, to the end of the episode um, for me I personally would have liked to continue it uh, but we have reached our limit for, for the day and I'm sure plenty of people at home do want to uh, get to bed etc including yourself so um Look, just uh, like one thing I normally do before uh, anyone goes, if you can just give one to three parting advices based on uh, today's episode, or if you really wanted, you know, if someone just tuned in now, or if someone wanted the cream of the episode, what's what would you what do you take away, and what would you be saying to to someone who's just tuned in now? It's like, oh man, I missed the first hour and a half. I really hope they say something something now that I can just 
Wow, take talk it about all pressure. Away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I do it to everyone. So okay, <laughs> so let's let's just sort of really. Uh, how, how long have I got? One minute. You got you got as long as you want. No, Don't okay, worry. inshallah. Please we're just away. going to we're going to put this in a nutshell. Is that the, mm. that's what they say, huh? Well, look, uh, Yanni, Yanni. Today's talk was about you know marriage and divorce, mm -hmm. right? In our community, and um, when it comes to marriage, there's the pre-marriage stuff. Yeah, that's the stuff leading up to marriage. So here we're going to say to those of you who are intending on getting married, learn about marriage, mm. learn about the roles, learn about you know gender roles, uh, your rights, your obligations, and 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 um, the knowledge is key. And um, yeah. you know do do a pre-marriage counselling course if you have to. Um, ask questions. You know, reach out. Don't be afraid. Um, communicate your standards to your. You know, communicate your boundaries, communicate your belief, communicate your values. So communication is key. Um, this is all, you know, before you even, you know, sign the dotted line, mm. you know. So I think, you know, that 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 uh, istishara, asking about the person mm. as much as you can, you know, don't take don't take any uh, don't take a gamble don't take the risk mm. um, and then I would say to you do your istikhara prayer and once you've done all of that then put your trust in Allah and proceed now once you get married okay um, it's important um, to to be to be you know um, revering Allah making Allah a priority in your lives helping each other to get to Jannah mm. That's foundational. That's a pillar. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, always make sure that your relationship with Allah is strong. Okay. Uh, secondly, know your, you know, fulfill your uh, obligations towards each other. Mm. Okay. And uh, don't compromise on them. Okay. That if Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has um, given instructions, do those things without compromise. Okay. Um, you know, um, you know, thirdly, um, uh, you know, be consistent in communicating in the languages of love mm. that your significant other understands okay so really be you know um you know doing those things um you know don't not being selfish but being selfless um you know not coming home and saying you know honey i'm home but mm. you know but honey there you are ah uh, this has a big difference right <laughs> it makes a big difference huh? you know um you know got, so, so taking the attention i got a book in to figure out these so one liners taking <laughs> taking the attention uh, uh, you know away away from you now one thing i'm going to say to also to to the married couples and more specifically to the sisters mm. um be careful how much you tolerate be careful if especially if you're in an abusive relationship mm. a toxic relationship be careful how much you tolerate because the more you tolerate, the more you are teaching your husband how to treat you. Mm. Does that make sense? That's huge, yeah. Okay, 100%. that's something I want you to think about, um, ladies, and and the sisters in Islam, um, and uh, you know, always be ready to change. You mm. know, and you know, be ready to change. Um, and instead of thinking your way into a new way of doing things. I think it's important to just start doing, acting your way mm. into a new way of thinking. Okay. So just do it. Do it. You know what I mean? Like if you know it's got to be done, then just do what you what you know needs to be done. Yeah. Don't think about it. Just start doing it. Mm. Okay. Don't worry about perfection. Just get do you know aim for perfection. Mm. But but I think just you know. Um, uh, because if you some people they're just too worried about getting it so perfect, yeah, and that that type of mindset is probably going to get you nothing done. Mm. So it's better to do something than 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 you achieve nothing at all because you're aiming for perfection. Mm. Okay, dua is key. Always make dua for your spouse and for your marriage. Rabbana, Allah teaches us a uh, Allah teaches us say dua in the Quran. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَالذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ Asking Allah to make your spouse the delight of your eye. Mm. So make dua, protect your marriage and your family from the eye. Okay. Um, so there is a dua, you know, the morning, in the morning, adhkar, Allahumma inni asaluka al-afwa wal afiyah fi dunya wal akhirah, Allahumma inni asaluka al-afwa wal afiyah fi dunya wa dunyaya wa ahli wa mali. So you ask Allah to protect your family. Mm. Okay. If you have children, say to your children, you know, ask Allah mm. to protect them from the evil eye. These are all very, very important things. Okay. Be remarkable communicators. Continue to communicate, communicate, communicate in your marriage. Mm. Communicate what's frustrating you, but find the right time, the right place. 
okay? Um, you know, treat each other's needs seriously. Talk each other's languages. And um, and lastly, like, you know, we touched on Dalil. Yes, do visit dalil.com.au. Yeah. Um, and in in in, the, in short, we're going dalil.global. That's our website, inshallah. Inshallah. And, um, you know, if you're looking for, um, and we have our Facebook page, Alhamdulillah, our Instagram page. And uh, if you've got events you want to add, um, if you uh, have a business you want to add, um, if you're looking for a business or a masjid, um, if you're looking for some articles, if you're looking to sell things, um, inshallah, Dalil is your go to go to place, and I appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here Anytime. and to be able no, to share a few words with the honestly, community. Yeah. I'm very blessed, and then I say Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. for all the countless blessings that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, has uh, has blessed us with. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and you you are also on uh, Facebook yourself. If anyone wants to reach out, yes, Alhamdulillah, in regards to this, um, this topic that we covered today, inshallah, I'd love to help. Awesome. Dave, just for me, uh, I'll sum it up. I know we, we talk about this every single episode, um, but it just goes to show the level of importance that it holds, uh, especially within our uh, religion. Point number one, as the Sheikh mentioned, knowledge. You know, getting the knowledge of um, you know of, of what we what we're getting ourselves into, what we're dealing with, is just super important. And I'm sure there's an abundance of courses or, you know, there's an abundance of books out there uh, in the Islamic bookstores where we can just, you know, pick them up, have a read, get some, you know, get some information and and go from there. Um, The other thing I wanted to mention was just for us to always understand that we are all created differently. Um, And the Sheikh, you know, mentioned that you know, everyone's going to have different situations. Everyone's got different upbringings. Everyone's got different environment, different friends, different, uh, you know, different influences, etc. So, you know, reason with that and try to learn to understand that from from, from your spouse. Um, you know, in the example he mentioned, we figured that it, it might have provided some hope, I guess, you know, had there been more understanding of the other person's uh, you know, upbringing or influences, etc. So, you know, have the understanding that everyone is different, and you know, not all are the same. And you know, if we just are more, you know, empathetic towards those those external factors, we just may see um, some hope and some positives, especially when we are interacting with each other. Um, and then on that last point where we did talk about Dalil, look, uh, I do understand. You know, a lot of people complain to me that. They they hate dealing with um, our own kind, but I think sometimes we just got to put up with it, bite the bullet, take the hard pill, um, and understand that you know in terms of community and a minority, you know this is the best thing that we can be doing. We need to put aside you know all negativity and just deal with each other and try to promote you know, Islamic businesses, Islamic services, because we do want to see each other grow. And you know platforms like Dalil. You know, they're going to provide that service where you jump on there, you need a plumber, you need a carpenter, you need, an, you know, you want to go to an event, you want to go to the mosque, you want to donate somewhere, you, whatever it is you want to do, you can go through that platform, inshallah, and you're going to be using someone Islamic and that money, not you know, it's going to stay within the circle and potentially, you know, that's where people... You know, th- they start using money to, you know, t- towards Islamic things, I hope. You know, so if we can just push really hard as a community to really try to support each other and not, you know, use other people and, and, you know, visit all these bigger corporations that provide other services and all this other type of thing. If we just put aside our pride and, you know, be happy to spend just that little bit more within our, uh, within our capabilities, we'll see a huge improvement, I think, in the community. Uh, Allahu alam. So that's my couple of points there. Barakallahu um, fikum and jazakumullahu khairan for for tuning in to all our uh, listeners and viewers on Facebook. And uh, until next episode, inshallah, in a couple of weeks' time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.